Praise the Lord, family. Praise the Lord, family. We are here in celebration. Nothing is dead here. If you have come here looking for the dead, then you have come to the wrong place. Nothing is dead here. We are celebrating life. We are celebrating life. We are celebrating a wonderful life. Wonderful man. Did wonderful things for wonderful people, for many wonderful people. Um, so we are here to just celebrate his life. 92 years, 92 years. There's nothing, yeah, nothing sad about that. So we're going to celebrate with music because Father Thomas loved music. And we're going to bring up his cherubs at this time. It's the Sacred Heart Youth Choir.
Okay? Now, these young people that are coming to us now, they used to be in the youth choir, and then they growed up. <laughs> and so now some of them are the teen choir and young adult choir. So let's bring them forth now. Some of them were part of the youth choir that was called, the teen choir that was called the Urban Parish Youth Choir, which was, uh, anybody know the Urban Parish Coalition was uh, still uh, started by uh, Bishop Cumberton and Father Thomas. And so, uh, yeah, this was one of his choirs.
in the blood. Power in the blood. This means. So this means. So this means. So this means. I've been in the storm and the rain, but the blood still stays the same. Whatever's going wrong, my world clothes are on. I might be in a daze, but you can't have my praise. No matter the attack, I won't turn back. This means war. Say this means. Say this means. Say this means. You can't have my family. You can't have my increase. You can't have my breakthrough. No, 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 no. You can't have my. You can't have my. You can't. You can't. You can't. can't, 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 can't This power in your prayer Prayer changes things You can't take this lying down Everybody, this means So this means Choir.
At this point, uh, I know John looking for something to do. I'm about to give you something to do, John. <laughs> Come on over. We're gonna call forth two of our former ministers of music 
Mr. John Thorne and Mr. Jerome Jackson on a song written by Jerome Jackson. Sacred heart, give me a sacred heart. 
Yeah, a sacred heart like Jesus. A heart that's full of love. See, anybody embodied that, it was Father Thomas, right? Sing one of Father Thomas' songs he liked that he requested. It went, There's a sweet, sweet spirit in this place. And I know. Come and bless us now.
Amen.
know what? Yeah, we've been off script, right? So, <laughs> so uh, <laughs> I'm going to ask uh, uh, these gentlemen to come and bless us as well. They've got their uh, growth and start in at, right here at Sacred Heart in youth choir. So I'm going to ask those Warren boys to come forward and bless us. Look at him.
to the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Been good to me. Been, 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 good, been, good, been, good, been, good. Been good. Has it been real, real good? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Been good to me. He's been good. Amen. Hasn't he been good? Amen. What an awesome God we serve. How great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. And no one will see how great, how great. Is our God. Sing it again. How great. How great is our God. Sing with me. How great is our God. Oh, sing how great. How great is our God. the song one time and we even got Father Thomas to turn around a little bit. <laughs> Here we go. Come on, we came to celebrate. Let's give God praise today. Amen. <laughs> The Lord is
with me right now. The Lord is blessing me. He's making a way somehow. You may not be able to see, yeah, but the Lord is doing for me. Over and over again, He's blessing me. Oh, He's blessing me. in me and he's in my talk oh yes the Lord blessing me he's in my heart and soul from the crown of my head to the tears to my toes over and over again he's blessing me yeah he's in my walk he's in my walk oh yeah He's in my talk. He's in Come my on heart. and praise him. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes, the Lord is blessing me. He's in my mind. He's in my mind. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes, the Lord is blessing me. I got him in my heart. He's in my heart. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes, the Lord is blessing me. Oh, he blessing me. He's blessing me. Oh, yeah. Over and over again, yeah. Come on, Sopranos. Come on, praise him. We had to celebrate. Give God the glory. Yes. Oh, yeah. Is he a blessing? Yeah, every time. Every time Come on, Alto. Come on, praise him. God's been good. He gave me 52 years. Oh, yeah. Woo! Come on, praise him. Woo! Come on, church. Woo, come on, church, let's praise it. Every time I turn around, can I hear you? Woo, every time. Every time I turn around. Yes, yes, thank you. Every time I turn around. Be a blessing. Every time I turn Had he blessed us. Every time I turn 52 around. years. Yeah. Every time I turn around. Every time. Over. 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 How many times can he bless you? How many times can he heal you? Over. How many times can he deliver you? Can he save you? He blessed me. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes, he can. Yes, he will. Yes, he has. He's a deliverer. He's a way maker. He's a healer. Thank you, Jesus. Woo! Thank you, Lord. Yes, 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 Lord. Oh, yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Every time I turn around. Every time. 
understand why Cheer up my brother Live in the sunshine Cause we'll understand it All by and by Father know all about it Father alone will understand why <coughs> cheer up my brother let's live in the sunshine and we'll understand We'll understand it. We'll understand it. All by and by, I need the old. I need the every hour. I need. Oh, bless, bless me now, my Savior. I come to Thee. I need the old. I need thee every hour. I need thee. Oh, bless me now, my Savior. I come to Anybody ask you who I am, who I am, who I am, if anybody ask you who I am, you ought to tell a mama child of God. If anybody ask you who he is, if anybody ask you who he is, who he is. Who he is, if anybody asks you who he is, tell him he's a child of God. Oh, if anybody asks you who he is, who he is, who he is, if anybody asks you who he is. Tell him he's a child. Not who he was, but who he is. If anybody asks you who he is, who he is, who he is, anybody ask you who he is, tell him he's a child of God.
Amen. We, first, I want to say thank you for everyone coming out. Um, and you can be seated. We're going to start Mass in about five minutes. Um, but I do, unfortunately, have to send all those who are gathered in the back of the church to the parlor. Um, we are going to have communion stations there. And the police have asked that we also don't have people who are standing in the back of the church. So we will have an usher that will lead you uh, to the parlor. Uh, there are 225 chairs over there. We promise you uh, that we will be able to accommodate everyone who's standing up uh, in the back of the church. Uh, so we just ask that you uh, please follow the directions of the ushers uh, so that we may begin right at 11 o'clock. Thank <laughs> you. 
This truly is the day that the Lord has made, and so let us rejoice and be glad in it. I told you all, Father Thomas never wanted to talk about the day that his end would come, uh, but in ways he's prepared us in so many ways, and so today we're just going to celebrate. Celebrate the man who has been so much for so many, who stood for so many, and continues to shine his light upon us. And so as we begin our celebration today, uh, we are grateful to have his best friend uh, for many years, uh, Bishop Thomas Gumbleton as our celebrant. And we'd like to also welcome our Archbishop Alan Vignamon, the Archbishop of Detroit. <laughs> as well as our Bishop Donald Hanchin. <laughs> and our homilist uh, for today is none other than Father Tyrone Robinson. <laughs> And so let us stand as we begin the celebration of Father's life with our song, Blessed Assurance. Okay. 
in the waters of baptism, Father Norm Thomas died with Christ and rose with him to new life. Amen. May he now share with Jesus everlasting glory. Okay. Let us pray. O oh God, you have strengthened us by the mystery of the cross, and you promise us a share in the mystery of your Son, Jesus' resurrection. We pray that you mercifully grant your departed servant, Father Norm Thomas, be gathered into the company of your chosen ones who live with you forever. And we ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. I'd like to invite Karen Yoder for our first week. reading from the book of Ecclesiastes. 
There is an appointed time for everything, and a time for every affair under the heavens, a time to give birth and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot the plant, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones and a time to gather them, a time to embrace and a time to be far from embraces, a time to seek and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to cast away, a time to rend and a time to sow, a time to be silent and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time of war and a time of peace. What profit have workers from their toil? I have seen the business that God has given to mortals to be busied about. God has made everything appropriate to its time, but has put the timeless into their hearts so they cannot find out from beginning to end the work which God has done. I recognize that there is nothing better than to rejoice and to do well during life. Moreover, that all can eat and drink and enjoy the good of all their toil. This is a gift of God. The word of the Lord. Oh, 
mercy follow me all the days of my life. And if the Lord's own house shall I dwell forever and evermore, the Lord is my shepherd. Reading from the second letter to Paul, of St. Paul, to Timothy. I charge you in the presence of God and of Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead, and by his appearing in his kingly power, proclaim the word, be persistent, whether it is convenient or inconvenient, convinced Reprimand, encourage, through all patience or t- and teaching. For I am already being poured out like a libation, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have competed well. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. From now on, the crown of righteousness awaits me which the Lord, the just judge, will award me on that day. And not only to me, but to all who have longed for his appearance. The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Be in our minds, on our lips, and in our hearts. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, feed my lambs. He then said to him a second time, Simon, son of John, 
do you love me? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, tend my sheep. He said to him a third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was distressed that he had said to him a third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. And Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Amen, amen, I say to you, when you were younger, you used to dress yourself and go where you wanted. But when you, are, when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. My brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord.
First, I want to make an announcement. Uh, Deacon John Wright, my classmate, who is also signed here, has tested positive with COVID. And so he sends his apologies and he wants to you know he is here with you in spirit, but he is recovering at home. And so we pray for him and he assures us he's praying for us as well personally i would like to think thank the lebanese catholic community you have graced the Archdiocese of Detroit with two wonderful priests who served well in the black Catholic community. <laughs> Father Raymond Ellis and Father Norman Thomas. I asked you to bear with me for a moment. I'd like to just think about Peter. We see him eating with Jesus. We know that after that experience in the courtyard and the high priest house, Peter denied Christ. He was troubled and broken, and we find him hiding in shame in the upper room. And he receives a message that Jesus is risen. The scriptures say he runs with John to the tomb and finds it empty. It says John immediately believed but it doesn't say anything about Peter. Peter is still questioning and is in grief and doubt and anguish and sorrow. And then Jesus appears to them in the upper room and Peter says nothing, he is caught silent. Usually he's the one to speak up and blurt out something, but now he's silent. And he's questioning what is resurrection about? What is all of this about? And at one point it becomes a little too much for Peter. And he says, I'm going fishing. It's in fishing that he can settle his mind. It's fishing where he met Jesus for the first time. And so he went fishing and on the sea, John says, the person speaking to them on the shore, it's the Lord. And Peter jumps out of the boat and swims to the shore. The scripture says he put on clothes. I don't think Peter took time to put on clothes. He just jumped in the sea and 
swam to the shore. And I'm sure he's ready to give his explanation to the Lord why he did what he did. But Jesus tells him, let's gather the sticks to make a fire to have breakfast. So he does. He's ready to answer and do everything that the Lord asked him. And we see that he pulls the net ashore pretty much on his own and brings out fish. And then in that moment where they're eating breakfast alone and Jesus is with him, and for us it's very Eucharistic, Jesus says to Peter, do you love me? And Peter immediately answers, yes, Lord, I love you. And I'm sure he began to try to explain what happened at the courtyard and what he was going through. And Jesus asked him again, do you love me? Peter doesn't hear the commission because he's trying to explain what happened. And the third time Jesus asked him, finally, Peter hears, yes, Lord, you know I love you. And Jesus says, tend my sheep, shepherd my flock, care for my sheep. I'm sure at some time in Father Thomas's life, he heard that same invitation from the Lord. Do you love me? And I believed he responded, yes, Lord. And the Lord gave him the same commission. Tend my sheep. Feed my lambs. Shepherd my flock. When he arrived here at Sacred Heart Church, he began doing what the Lord commissioned him to do, the Great Commission. You clapped before I asked you. <laughs> do you believe he did it well? Did he feed you? Did he shepherd you? Did he tend to the flock? And if you did believe that he did it well, I believe that we should respond like the old saints with yes, Yes! 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 Be seated. He shepherded you well. It's interesting that Father Thomas came here to Sacred Heart and he immersed himself in the black culture. You find him loving what we loved cherishing what we cherish, fighting what we fight against, hoping for what we hope, looking to a future that we have. 
He immersed himself in the culture of African Americans in a way of integrity. You know, you can notice quickly those who are trying to be with you. They're clapping and rocking. You know, that's only surface. But Father Thomas touched the souls of black people. And in touching the souls of black folk, he learned what was important to us as saints, as I already called him the saint, as, as Pope Francis said, As Pope Francis said, pastors should smell like their sheep. <laughs> Father Thomas did that. And so today, we commend him to the Lord. It is our time now to say, yes, Lord, he was a good and faithful servant. <laughs> and we commend him to your mercy. We say yes. He ran the race. Yes, he fought well. Yes, he kept the faith. And now we believe that a crown of righteousness <laughs> should be bestowed upon him now. But there's a little twist here, I believe. I think Father Thomas is asking, why are you here today? He told John Thorne, there will be a lot of people there. Some of them want to make sure I'm dead. <laughs> but you, if you loved Father Thomas, and you say, do I hear him saying today, if you love me, then fight with every fiber of your life to fight against racism. you love me, make sure you are working for the equality of women. If you love me, recognize that the poor are your brothers and sisters. Never forget what Jesus said, whatever you do to the least of your brothers and sisters, that you do to me. I believe Father Thomas is saying, if you love me, 
then fight against the corporation in this country that is built on producing guns. I believe he's saying, if you love me, then care for the children, not only in the womb, but those who are present in our world at this time. I believe he's saying, if you love me, Love the city that I love. Make sure that the economic development and the finances go not only downtown, but on Mac and Bewick. on Linwood and Dexter, on West Chicago and Illinois. Let all the citizens of Detroit experience the revival. If you love me, make sure that you care for the sick and the elderly. And he's saying personally to you, Sacred Heart and Saint Elizabeth, if you love me, love one another as I loved you. You can be seated. <laughs> Father Thomas has fulfilled his life on this earth. Father Thomas is now at the throne of God, receiving his just due. Now, if you were someone who built your life and hopes and dreams all on Father Thomas, I don't know what to say to you. Father Thomas is standing next to Mary, singing her soul. My soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. But if you listen to Father Thomas, Sunday after Sunday, Saturday after Saturday, he spoke of a man, a man named Jesus. That is the man he, like Mary, is saying, do whatever he tells you to do. That is the man who will lead you through darkness into light. Jesus is the one who is our salvation. Jesus is the one who raises the dead to new life. Jesus is the hope and the future of Sacred Heart, of St. Elizabeth, of all Christian people. Follow him. Trust in him. Believe in him. Study him. 
know him, love and worship him, Jesus, the Lord. And today, at this point in time, I know there are many of you, your hearts are broken. You've been crying for two weeks. Your spirits are dark. I say today, in this place, at this time, it is important for the Christians to profess their faith in Jesus. Now, at the casket of Father Thomas, we are to profess Jesus as Lord. He did, and he's encouraging us to do the same. You who are in mourning, and you must mourn, I say to you the same words that Paul said to the Thessalonians. Do not grieve like those who have no hope. Our hope is in the Lord Jesus. He is the source of your healing. He is the source of your strength. He is the way that is leading you through the sorrow. And so, choir, I want you to sing the song of faith. The Lord is my light and my salvation. This is our hope. This is our trust. This is the faith of Father Thomas. The Lord is my light and my salvation. In him I shall not fear.
turn to God in prayer once more. Our responses hear our prayer. In baptism, Father Thomas received the light of Christ. Scatter the darkness now and lead him over the waters of death. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Our brother, Father Thomas, shared in the priesthood of Jesus Christ, leading God's people in prayer and worship. Bring him into your presence, where he will take his place in the heaven, heavenly liturgy. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Many friends, members of our families, and of the parish families of Sacred Heart and St. Elizabeth have gone before us and await the kingdom. Grant them an everlasting home with your Son. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Loving God, you entrusted Father Norm to our care, and now you embrace him in your love. Take Father Norm into your keeping, together with all of your sons and daughters who have died. Comfort us, your sorrowing servants who seek to do your will and to know your saving peace. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Those who trust in the Lord, now sleep in the Lord. Give refreshment, rest, and peace to all those faith is known to you alone. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. The family and friends of Father Thomas seek comfort and consolation. Heal their pain and dispel the darkness and doubt that comes from grief. Lord, in your mercy. Let us pray for the continuance of urgent work of our brother to eradicate the sin of racism yes. in the Catholic Church. Yes. May we who remain keep hands on the plow yes. until everyone can find a home in the church. Yes. Lord, in your mercy.
My sisters and brothers, let us pray that the sacrifice we offer this afternoon may be acceptable to our all-powerful and all-loving God. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and of all his holy church. O oh God, look with favor on your servant, Father Norm, for whom we offer you this sacrifice of praise, humbly entreating that reconciled with you through these devoted offices, he may come to share forever the, his, your risen life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to God. It is right to give Him thanks. It is truly right and just, always, everywhere, to give you thanks, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him, the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned that those saddened by the certainty of dying may be consoled by the promise of everlasting life to come. Indeed, for your believing people, Life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling place is made ready for us in heaven. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts, and powers of heaven. We sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. indeed holy, and to be glorified, O God, the fount of all holiness. Make holy these gifts, we pray, by sending upon them 
the Spirit, your Holy Spirit, upon them, so that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Before he was given up to death, a death he freely accepted, Jesus took bread. He gave you thanks and praise. Then he broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take this, all of you, eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. And when supper was ended, he took the cup again. He gave you thanks and praise. Then he gave the cup to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, drink from it. This is the cup of my blood. Where am I? The blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate this memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. We humbly pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by your Holy Spirit. God, remember your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of love, together with Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, and all the clergy, and the entire people your son has gained for you. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all that with the Blessed Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may come to share as co-heirs in eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ, through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours, almighty God, forever and ever. Amen. Now we turn together in prayer to God as we pray the words Jesus taught us. Our Father, Our Father, Our Father 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will. Us this day, our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors, and lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days. But that, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For thine is the kingdom, the power, the glory, both now and forever, and evermore. Amen. Amen. Jesus Christ, you said to your disciples, I leave you peace. Peace is my farewell gift to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom where you live forever and ever, amen. amen. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all of you. And with your spirit. And we very quickly share a sign of peace with one another.
my brothers and sisters, this is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. We are happy to be called to his table. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed.
Please be seated. We will now have remarks in this order. Tom Lawrence, his nephew. John J.F. Thorne, associate pastor. And then we will have Archbishop Alan Vigneron. Father Norm was a dedicated priest and most certainly a dedicated follower of Jesus Christ. Amen. He was loved and cherished by his family, and I don't just mean the family up here at front, the Lebanese family. It's clear this is all one large family. <laughs> Father Norm was born into a family of faith and uh, attended Catholic schools and knew at a, a young age he wanted to dedicate his life to God and was ordained at the young age of 24. Nowadays, priests are ordained more like at age 30. And he served for an unbelievable 68 years, 54 right here. Father Norm presided over thousands of baptisms and funeral services and marriages, not to mention the masses. And uh, it wasn't just for the people that belonged to the parish here. A lot of us family members did come back and, and get married by Father Norm. My wife and I, Veronica and I, came up from Texas to be married by Father Norm in 1987. Came back each time a daughter was born and had them baptized here. And I know several people up here could say the same. We have family members that travel several, several miles every weekend to attend Mass here. Norm and Robin, Mike and Ann, Gary and Alicia, 
There's something about Father Norm and this church, this, this amazing parish. <laughs> Is, is there any question why we would, over the years, have many of our family reunions right here at Sacred Heart? Because you're our family. <laughs> this place is our family. <laughs> Father Norm and, and the parish and his staff welcomed us every time, and we would start with a mass, usually the first weekend of October. We would have a mass right here, 5 o'clock on Saturday, and then head over to the activity center for a feast, a Lebanese feast. It was, it, was, it was amazing. You know, one thing about Father Norm, he, he, it, there's no question in my mind God has a sense of humor. I, has Father Norm not stood up here and, and put smiles on your faces and, and laughter? I mean, it, when we... When we were kids, I remember him coming over to check on Polly and the kids, and, you know, he would just crack us up even back then. You know, if, if something was, you know, you were complaining about something or whatever, Father Norman would just go, well, you'll be a henway. And you'd go, what's a henway? And he'd go, oh, about five pounds. I, said, I, I, I still use that one. Okay. And right here when my mother was before this altar in 2007, Father Norm, you know, even in the house of God, saw fit to put a can of Maxwell House coffee in a coffee cup and a Detroit Tiger baseball cap. Guess what? Polly had a passion for the Tigers and, and even more so for lots of coffee, just like him. I, I wasn't going to bring this one up, but I just have to, sitting next to my brother. This wasn't maybe a, a source of laughter at the time, but... Gary and Father Norm and I laughed about this, I don't know how many times over the years, but Gary, when he was a kid, we were kids, we were at our grandparents, and Father Norm said he was going to take him downstairs for a big surprise. Well, Gary went down there all jubilant, and came back up red-faced and in tears. And apparently, the surprise was to learn the lesson of obedience and the fourth commandment. <laughs> I think it's stuck. <laughs> <laughs> Father Norm, Sister Kathy, John Thorne, Ray Graham, I mean, unbelievable souls. They represent to me the true meaning of following Jesus Christ. <laughs> Putting the needs of others first. You know, following Jesus' commandment to love God with all your heart, soul, and strength and to love your neighbor as yourself. Are there any better examples than that? And plenty others in here. Father Norm paved a path to heaven, not only for himself, but for many others. And taught us lessons about love and faith and serving others. We are blessed to have had you in our lives. God bless all of you. And let's look forward to seeing Father Norm again in our true eternal home. Thank you. So I want to say thank you, but Father also had a whole group of friends uh, who were outside of the Catholic Church. Uh, these friends inspired him. He worked with them uh, on the trail, uh, fighting for justice and equality, uh, still working for equity, 
And so uh, we have uh, several of them gathered here today, and I just want to call them by name uh, so I can have them stand. Uh, Reverend Dr. Kenneth Harris. Reverend Dr. Kenneth Flowers. Reverend Dr. Jim Holly. And the Reverend Joanne Watson. Reverend Dr. Wendell Anthony. Uh, Reverend Ed Rowe. Reverend Dr. Oscar King. Bill Wiley Kellerman. And then we've had some folks who have been amazing to us just in this last uh, week and a half. They've always been around. Uh, but I want to thank in a special way uh, Mary Waters, our councilwoman uh, for this area, for connecting us with everything we needed. Thank you. And then I want to thank uh, Ben Calais Thompson, who did a two-hour series on Father Thomas that so many people were on. Thank you so much. And of course, an old friend of his and of ours, and we've seen her recently, uh, but it's, it seems like I always see her at funerals, unfortunately, uh, but Teola Hunter. And we have received uh, so many um, tributes to Father Thomas from Jackson, Mississippi, uh, from Mayor's Chokwe Lumumba. Uh, from the city of Southfield uh, with uh, Kenson Cyber, as well as the city of Detroit, Scott Benson, the Wayne County Treasurer, Eric Sabri, uh, the city of Detroit from Mary Waters as well. From the Wayne County Executive, uh, Warren Evans, from the Southfield Police, uh, Elvin Barron from the Wayne County Commissioners uh, that was presented last night, and then from the House of Representatives from Representative Sri Tanadar. And so we thank you all. Uh, when I think of Father Thomas, uh, a small man in stature, and in recent years he seemed to be even shorter because he was leaning, walking on a walker, um, but Father had this amazing gift of finding your gift and helping you to walk in that gift. And I can't say it was just me. Uh, at five years old, he saw something in me and kept pushing, pushing, pushing. But it's happened to so many people. As we looked at the tributes that were online, the things that came on Facebook, what we found was this man who was small in stature was larger than life. And while he was named the people's pastor, uh, and we know he was, uh, no disrespect at all to anyone, sorry, I'm gonna say this. Yes, I'm gonna say this, I'm gonna get it out. Um, but he was like the Bishop of Detroit. When we talk about racism and how it works, and I know, I've had conversations, uh, even with people in the church who think that white privilege doesn't exist. But for a Lebanese man to use all of his access and all of his privilege to take on the pain, the suffering of a people that weren't actually his, but became his, for them to take hold and to continuously walk side by side. Yes, yes. I remember uh, several years ago, we were at the 50th um, anniversary of Dr. King's uh, I Have a Dream speech here in Detroit. And at that time, I was in the Office of Black Catholics and I was trying to get people to come together and march. I said, oh, we'll call all the bishops, we'll call everybody, we'll call people to come and let's walk on uh, Woodward Avenue. And the first person who called me back was Norman Thomas. 
And even as he got older in age and he wasn't able to move so well, if there was ever a time that he was needed, he was there. But Father Thomas wouldn't want a street named after him. He wouldn't want a building named after him. Those things are nice. But what he would want is for us to keep working. To keep working until everybody in our city, till everybody in our church finds a place of welcome. These were the things that really pushed him. In these last few years, we've been working on this uh, project called The Changemakers and trying to find ways to engage people in the church to help eradicate the sin of racism. And it woke him up every day because he knew that until every member of this parish and of St. Elizabeth and every other parish had access to the fullness of what the church was, then it was not for anything at all. But what does that mean for us? Father Thomas knew the great responsibility that it was of being the pastor of this church. It's more than just a church, but this church is the mother church of black Catholics in our diocese. When St. Peter Claver was asked to come and take over this building at Sacred Heart, they were asked not to change this name to St. Peter Claver. Because at that time, the bishop said the light and the love of the Sacred Heart of Jesus had to always shine in this city. Father Thomas became that heart, that Sacred Heart of Jesus. And so plans fail sometimes. I know I'm supposed to be leaving uh, Detroit. Uh, yeah, it's. But uh, I promise that just as I have for the last year, uh, to continuously stand by his vision and to walk with him and to make sure that this parish was supported, that I will be here until we get a new pastor. And I will continuously support you all the way. God bless. Praise be Jesus Christ. I have uh, certain duties that fall to me as the principal pastor of the Catholic Church in Southeast Michigan. And one very much in, on my mind today is to give praise and thanks to God that he's brought all of us here for this final celebration of the Holy Eucharist with Father Thomas's physical presence in our midst. We think of how many times he's led us, led all of you in prayer. And I want to thank Bishop Gumbleton for leading us in this celebration. I have a profound sense of the personal bond. It goes all the way back to seminary between these two men. And so I offer him my particular sympathy, and I know I do that on behalf of all of you. I also want to thank Father Robinson for his preaching today. And as the principal pastor to thank the music minister, I'm so very grateful. And really to all of the, those who are in leadership here at Sacred Heart and St. Elizabeth for extending such kind hospitality for us today. I'm so very grateful for that. All of that done, more principally, it's my happy duty on behalf of the Catholic community to offer a word of condolence to Father's families, his family by the natural bond those of you who are here in the church today, 
and to those of you who are his family at St. Elizabeth and Sacred Heart, uh, on behalf of the whole Catholic community, not only do I offer con condolences, but I offer you the assurance of our prayers that Father continues to be prayed for in the liturgies of all the parishes of all the archdioceses. And I hope that this bond of prayer uh, lifts you up and sustains you in this sorrow. Also, I speak on behalf of the principal priest of the Archdiocese, and I want on behalf of my brother priests who are here today, and those of whom who were not able to make it, to offer these points, which I hope are a tribute, taken as a tribute to Father. First of all, to pay tribute to him as a real uh, fighter against sins of racism. We live in the conviction, in the knowledge from the teaching of our Lord Jesus that every sin of racism, every act of racism is a form of blasphemy, an insult to the dignity of God our Father. And Father has been a great reminder to us of all of that and our responsibility. And I offer my, my tribute here in this church for him for that today. I'd also like to offer a tribute that uh, I think I speak for the brothers on this, I, I, but perhaps something that hasn't been underscored quite so very much today. And maybe a good way to think about it is to think about Father as the son of a Christian tradition that goes all the way back to Antioch. You know from the Acts of the Apostles that it was in Antioch, uh, those proto-Lebanese, we might say, who were first uh, called Christian and incorporated the gospel out of Jerusalem into a new way of life. And this, I think, was very much part of Father's missionary life, his life of service here, a conviction that the tradition we have all the way from the apostles has its proper place, and God has from all eternity wanted the revelation of Jesus to be expressed in the hearts and minds of African American women and men. And this is a great service that Father has rendered to us, and one that I pray we will continue to be faithful to. And because it isn't only for the blessing that this inculturation, this incarnation is to African American believers, but it's a blessing for all of us. It's a blessing for Polish American Catholics. The life and spirit, the life of Christ of African American Catholics is a blessing to Hispanic Catholics. It's a blessing to Irish American Catholics. It's a blessing God has given this community so that it can be shared with all of us. And I want to pay tribute to Father for that today as well. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord. May he rest in peace. May his soul and the souls of all those he loved in this world, his parents, his family, all those at whose passing he assisted, the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. Amen. Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our brother, Father Norm. May our farewell express our love for him. May it ease our sadness 
and strengthen our hope. One day, we shall joyfully greet him when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. Amen. In Israel and in the church, incensation is done as a way of honoring God. Father Thomas, through the word of God and the Holy Spirit, was made a member of the body of Christ. We now incense his body as a sign of that union in Christ. Okay. That's it. O oh, saints of God, come to Father Thomas's aid. Hasten to meet him, angels of my Lord. And may Christ, who God you, take you to himself. And may the angels lead you to the bosom of the final blessing. May the peace of God, which is beyond all understanding, keep our minds and hearts in the knowledge and love of God and of God's Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon us and remain forever. Amen. Let let us go in peace to Thanks. love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.
how he could take the pain, the heartache it would bring. Comfort just in no we he soon be gone. God gave him grace to run this old race. Soon he see his savior face to face. Cause he's, he's going up yonder. Going up yonder. He's going up yonder to be with the Lord. Those who are going to the cemetery, we ask that as you leave the church that you go outside and put your flashes on. We promise everybody who wants to go, we will make way for you to go. Uh, but if you could, uh, once you leave the church, uh, go out to your cars and turn your flashes on and we'll make sure you get in the procession. He could take the pain, he take the pain. heartache it would bring. The comfort just in no week is soon be gone. God gave him grace to run this old race. Soon he see his Savior face to face. 